Communication strategist Sarah Britton joins me now in the studio to share her expertise with us. Good afternoon, Sarah. Thank you for coming in. Well, everyone in South Africa has an opinion on this situation, uh, most notably their disappointment in FNB's decision. In your opinion, what is the significance of FNB's decision? Well, the question remains, have they done any significant damage to their brand? And funnily enough, I don't think they have. I think we have generally quite short attention spans. Next week, another scandal is going to distract us. And anybody who's prepared to go through the schlep of opening another bank account over this issue was planning to close their account with FNB anyway. So no, I don't think major damage to FNB's brand, which draws on a lot of other significant things, notably the fact that they're the world's most innovative bank. They're doing great marketing in other areas. So yes, this is an unfortunate mess. It could have been prevented, and I don't think it has any, done anyone any favors. But damage to them, no. I think damage to the ANC, on the other hand, it has reminded people what they don't like about the ruling party in no uncertain terms. What about implications, if any, uh, with regards to other companies, maybe even their competitors, the view of them now in their eyes? Uh, will there be I implications there, do you think? I think the major impact of this campaign is going to be to have a knock-on effect on other corporates who are planning to run similar campaigns that were trying to set a national agenda, trying to inspire the nation, because that's what this campaign set out to do. The whole objective was to inspire South Africans to find the greatness within, and it succeeded, very unfortunately, in inspiring South Africans to complain about the government. I don't think that was the intention at all. It was just uh, an unfortunate oversight, a uh, placing um, a controversial material somewhere on a blog. But I think a lot of us in the ad industry are going to be looking at this and thinking, hmm, okay, we'd better go and assess our own communication strategies again, check that messaging, check it, check it again, make sure that nobody could possibly be offended by it or misinterpreted it. So it is going to make a lot of us a lot more careful. Do you think that this situation speaks more to the fact that government are insecure perhaps and that they might be a little bit too sensitive or more to the fact that South Africans have this disappointment now in FNB, the fact that they were unable to stand up and fight for what they believe in? Well, I, th I think the, it's true on both sides. The government is remarkably insecure given how much hold they have on power that, that they would be disturbed by these little clips. And it's ironic listening to them talking about the impact on perceptions of South Africa as an investment destination. If they hadn't complained about these clips, nobody would have known about them. No would have, nobody would be paying half as much attention to this campaign if they hadn't complained. I think there is a lot of disappointment in the fact that FNB has apologized, but I, I think it, it's an unfair judgment. They were between a rock and a hard place. When you've got a lot of government business, when jobs are on the line and the clips had already been pulled a week before, I think it's unfair to judge them so harshly. And now the fact that South Africans, as you mentioned, are complaining about the fact that the ANC is that government that seems to, give, to get away with everything, the implications of that, I mean, that's also a, a problem. Oh, it, it's a huge problem and it's something that's probably best discussed in the, in the forums of our newspapers on news channels like this one, probably not within uh, the constraints of an ad campaign. All right, well, uh, Sarah, let me just ask you, know, you being a communications expert, I mean, you, you deal with, with, with words and the use of words and yeah. the interpretations that certain words mean. And some of the words that we saw coming out of uh, government spokespeople, words like they felt insulted and uh, accusing the FNB of treason. These are... I mean, oh, a, a completely ridiculous overreaction. But the ANC has a history of doing this. And they did it back in 2007 when FNB tried uh, something similar in that they, they wanted uh, President Mbeki at the time to make crime his number one priority. That backfired very badly. They had to pull the campaign before it even ran. So that's what surprises me as a strategist is that they've been there, done that, got the flak jacket. They know what happens when you do something the government doesn't like. The fact that they, they missed something, something that turned out to be really crucial, that didn't look important at the time, I, I'm surprised by that, that that got signed off. All right, well, thank you very much to Sarah Britton, communication strategist, talking to us there.